Hello everybody and welcome to the Saturday Night Podcast. We're going to head to a big weekend of action in the Ulster Club Championship. We have two Armagh teams taking on two Tyrone teams. It's Cumroy taking on Cully Hanna in the first game and Trillick against Cross Glen in the second. Both games in Oma on Saturday night. So we have a lot of interviews and a lot of guests on today to discuss these games. Live with me here is Paul Hurdy and Paddy McCreesh. And we're also going to hear from the Tyrone side with Sean Kavna and Pascal Canavan. So, boys, I suppose we'll talk about the, the Cully Hanna and Primary game first, um, as it's it's the first game of the double header. Um, Paddy, a lot of excitement, I'm, I'm assuming, in, in Cully Hanna getting into the competition for the first time since 2008. Yeah, obviously, yeah. So, it's been a long time since uh, we've been at this stage of an Ulster competition, you know, t- as you mentioned, 2008, and we didn't exactly cover ourselves in glory that year. So, um, but the boys winning this year, uh, it's brought an awful lot of ex- excitement to the area. Uh, they're looking forward to it and uh, we're expecting a big game out of them on Saturday and we're hoping for a good result. And Paul, I suppose the Ulster Club Championship, it seems to be for players, it seems to be a lot of people's favourite um, championship. W- what is it about the Ulster Club that, that everybody seems to enjoy so much? Because I know having spoke to a few players um, at the Ulster Club launch a couple of weeks ago, like every, everybody just loves being part of this Ulster Club Championship. Yeah, I, I suppose from personal experience, You've gone through your county where the, there seems to be a lot more pressure and responsibility and everybody knows each other inside out in the, in the club teams in your own, in your own county. And uh, I think once you, once you get through that and you've won your championship and the, sort of the pressure comes off a wee bit, you sort of, you maybe you relax into it a certain extent. But I think it's a case of over the years where you, you sort of throw the shackles off a wee bit and you try to express yourself a wee bit more and you, you maybe have a, bit, a wee bit more freedom. To, to express yourself in how you play the game and uh, I, th- I think it's just where you raise you, the bar is raised obviously because you're, you're playing the county the respective county championships of, of every county and you really want to you know go toe to toe with these guys and there's a wee bit more exposure all the papers is all over it and social media is all over it and it, and it can be live on telly like the games on Saturday evening so you know I think as players it, you know the pressure's off and you just really want to go out there and perform to your best ability and with with the pressure not as much maybe in, in your county championship that, that shines through into the Ulster Club Series. I, I suppose coming up against new teams, Paul, and facing opposition from different counties that you probably have never played before and you probably don't know a whole pile about and we'll get on to Cross and Trellick now um, in our next segment but like there's no recent history there, no recent history between Pumrae and, and Cully Hanna so it's maybe a bit of a guessing game going into these games. Exactly, you know, you go against these teams and you don't have as much maybe footage of them or stats and everything that a lot of management would go to look at and where you know everybody inside out in your own county and you know when you're playing each other in your own county so often you have that wee bit of maybe for want of a better word hatred for them or a bit of you know aggression towards them or you know things like that there where you go you, you, it's a clean slate when you're going outside the county so to speak but uh you know, it's a great it's a great way to go forward and just to go and play your your natural game. You know, pitch yourself against their better players and go toe to toe with them and and try and come out up. Just win your battle as you go out in the field. And I think a lot of players respond to that there. Hatred and, and aggression, Paddy. It, it's still our man throwing here on Saturday night. So there's plenty of club players, county players, sorry, on all four teams. So while there might be that unfamiliar territory. There's still that wee bit of a, a rivalry, maybe, with our Montreal. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Uh, there is that rivalry there. It's going to exist. Uh, it has done in the past, and it will do in the future. Um, and in fairness, uh, in this Ulster intermediate competition, the throne teams have been leading the way. Uh, in the last ten years, you know, they've been finalists in the six of the last ten years. They have that wee bit of history that our teams don't. Um, and that's what this Collyhanna team is going to go out and try and make a difference and change. That's that moving forward. Uh, I don't think any of the Armagh teams really in the last few years have really pushed on at this level uh, and that's what our um, challenge is now at the weekend uh, obviously there's boys that are familiar with each other I know Aidan Eugen and Kim Regeary they played together back in Samiris uh, whenever they won the Sigerson back in 2016 or 17 they were good and friendly with each other I'm sure there were a few text messages during the week uh, and obviously with the Armagh contingent that we have and with the throne contingent that they have like they know each other, know each other well and I'm sure they've been chatting to each other after games and what not but all that we put to one side and come Saturday evening whenever they're going head to head on uh, out in the field, you know. 
And that, that county contingent, I suppose the, the Cullyhanna county contingent, Paul, um, we know them fairly well. And all attacking threats, and we've seen them throughout the championship. Um, Aidan Nugent finished the intermediate championship, I think, with 5.31. He was the top scorer. And then you have Ross McQuillan chipping in with goals and points, Jason Duffy as well. Like that's The, the three Armagh players are so important to Cullyhanna and such a big threat going forward. Yeah, certainly are. You know, the three quality forwards who have a load of experience at county level. You know, they've been the, they've been playing with Ama this good few years, and they've just seemed to bring that into Cullyhanna's play this year. And you know, you'd really like to think that with that sort of attacking prowess that they have, that they could really, you know, Paddy mentioned that, and I know Ama team has really embraced the Ulster club at the intermediate level in this last few years. I think Cullyhanna is in a position this year to push on, you know, embrace this competition. And, and try and really go for the jugular on it because to have a chance to maybe you know get get to a, a semi final and on to a final and why not with the players you mentioned Aidan and you know the McQuillans and and Nugent and these boys you know the the, the other team would be scared of the life of these boys coming attacking them you know who do you pick up the matchups and you know you have to put your best defender in Aidan Nugent and then who do you pick up you know Ross McQuillan and you know it would be a, a jumble for them so you know I think Cullihan are, are in a really good position. To, to go and express themselves in this tournament and, and maybe do something that no AMA team has done in recent history. I think that's, that's a, a good point, Paul, because um, Paul is sort of speaking to you off her before we started this. You, you were saying about how much you've put into 2008 just to win the Intermediate Championship, while, while this year is we're all with favourites and I've no doubt you wouldn't have took your eye or underestimated um, any teams that just come up against Arma. But I know myself on the podcast a couple of times referring to, you know, this colleague on the team is going to win our man right crack at Ulster. So there's maybe a change of mentality from the side you were involved in 2008. Yeah, 100% would agree with that. Um, in 2008, whenever we got across the lane and we won our man, um, we had been knocking at the door for two or three years. I think maybe White Cross had beat us the previous year. There was a bit of a shamajal against the bridge the year before that. Uh, they got the better of us. Uh, so it was three or four years in the making that last uh, intermediate win for Kalyana and we were sort of just more relieved to get over the line some of us to be honest probably didn't even know that there was a competition after the Arma. we were just so relieved to win it um, and we didn't perform like Greenlock from Derry beat us that year to be honest I don't think that they were that long in intermediate level altogether um, they went on to actually contest the intermediate final that year against Trillick they were beaten by a point that year uh, crosses opposition this weekend um, but we probably weren't ready for that competition at that stage whereas this year with our current team they definitely are ready for the competition this year they would have been ending this up at the start of the year you know they wanted to do the double uh, they wanted to win the league and they wanted to win the championship now the league didn't necessarily go to plan but maybe not winning the league was maybe a blessing in disguise because it was their only route then to win the championship to get back up to senior football uh, and the sort of graphs this were both hands and they really went at it and They've just been so dominant in that competition this year, and this is the next step then to push on and then see how they get on against teams from all parts of Ulster. So uh, we're in a good place, and we're looking forward to the match on, on Saturday. And we spoke about their county men, but they have a county coach on the line as well, Paul. He'd have been Kieran McKeever, obviously, but in, uh, I'm assuming he was captain maybe when you were with Arma, and um, Geezer would have been just retired. But you'd obviously played when you shared a changing room with them. What's what's Kieran McKeever's influence like in the changing room? And obviously, he's, he's come on to be a, a great coach with Armagh as well. So, I suppose tell us a bit about what his influence will be in the changing room. Yeah, <coughs> Kieran, you know, he was he was a hell of a player when when back in my time and his time when we were playing back in the noughties and probably early early teenies. But uh, no, he's a good he's a great influence in the in the changing room. He's he's driven. He's a good marker uh, as a player and. Uh, you can just see that influence coming through into his coaching. He was always into his coaching. Even, you know, back then he was always taking tips off the likes of Geezer and, you know, Big Joe and Paddy Rock and, and Paul Grimley and all the boys that's come through. And now he's up with helping out Geezer and Kieran Donaghy and the boys. So you can just see that Kieran he's steadily progressed and listening to the people above him and now, you know, he's in there in the Cullyhanna change room and I'm sure he has the boys sitting there at the palm of his hand because he'd be a really good motivator man motivator, he'd be having quiet words in lads' ears, telling them what he wants of them, what he expects of them, and they can expect the same this weekend coming into the game. You know, there's no baggage this weekend, as I was saying earlier, no sort of hatred towards that position, but you can guarantee that Kieran will have something up his sleeve to, 
you know, to drive these boys on to, to get them over the line and to, to really push for this tournament and uh, have a good performance on Saturday evening. And obviously Kieran is the coach, um, Polly, but Stephen Reel, the manager, and Malachy Mackin's involved as well. Like Stephen, I think, went straight into management once he quit playing. And it was a tough couple of years for him there with boys away and obviously the county men and all, but um, I'm sure he was relieved to get over the line and now head into the Ulster Championship as manager. Yeah, absolutely. Like, listen, you have to give Stephen credit. Like, you know, he's getting his just rewards this year with uh, getting into me the title, but he had a long, hard slog there for three or four years whenever we were sort of at the tail end of the senior championship. Um, as we were seeing off air, like last year, we were playing Bally McNabb, they beat us in the senior championship. It was knockout, it was one game, you train all year for one game. Um, we were beaten, but I think a talent point was that Stephen didn't make any substitutes. So we didn't have the panel last year and we didn't have the numbers in past previous years to compete at senior level, really, if we were honest with ourselves. Like we need every one of our men back and playing and training consistently. And you can see the lift that the likes of Kieran McCoy has brought back in. Tony Donnelly wasn't allowed to play last year. He was sort of like cup tied from playing in America. Um, then you have Pierce Casey back performing. We didn't have Sean Connell playing last year. Maybe six or seven boys that are playing uh, on the current 15 you know, weren't available to Stephen you know, last year or the year before. So um, in fairness to him, he's stuck at it. Uh, he's worked hard. He's got a good backroom team in there with Maliki Mack and, and Sean Nugent and Francie Nugent and all them boys that are helping out with Kieran and his training whenever Kieran's not there. Um, and Stephen, in fairness to him, has stuck to his task manfully. And I'm just delighted for him that he got the win this year, you know, because I think he deserved it, to be fair to him. I think, I think probably for Polly Hanna's perspective, Polly, if there's one fear, it's maybe that they're slightly undercooked because maybe come through Armagh easier than, than some would expect of the Oaks. Give them a good run for their money in the semi-final, but outside of that, they were, they were way ahead of everybody. So it's, it's maybe a difficult judge for them that you know, they're taking so, games so easy in Armagh, but coming in, you're facing your own champions, and they're both tied for favourites for Ulster, I think. So it's going to be a different test. Oh, yeah, completely different test. Like, you know, as went through the group stages, like they were winning games easily like the come through the group stages like they're winning games by an average of 13 points then we said that we're going to get the first real test then after the group stages but then they beat Derry Nuts by 19 then in the quarter final but then the first real big task or test did come then in the semi-final against Pierce Oaks they won that game by 5 points realistically it could have been a different story if the Oaks had took maybe one or two other chances at the start of the second half they got through that game it was a tough game, the one by five, and then it was all set up then that St Paul's final then was going to be their biggest test of the year. And Furness, you know, it was a close game for the first 20 minutes in the final. It was four apiece at that stage, and then they got the first goal whenever Aidan intercepted that short kick out, gave it to Shea. Shea got the first goal, and then they really pushed on and ended up winning the final by 22 points. They can only really beat what's put in front of them, and they've passed every test with flying colours so far. So I don't really think we can sort of hold that against that. Uh, to them in fairness but Saturday will be a big test and time will tell then if they're fit to pass this test come Saturday but fingers crossed they will. So I mentioned earlier we got an interview um, during the week with Sean Kavner. he obviously his my team took on from my in the throne final so um, as much as we were saying Cully Hanna maybe don't know a lot about, about Primary, we certainly don't know a whole pile about them but Sean Kavner does so Sean, um, we'll hear from Sean now and he'll give us an insight into what Cully Hanna will be facing So Sean, thanks very much for coming on um, we're looking ahead to this Cully Hanna and Primary game and having played Primary a couple of weeks ago now um, you perfect man to give us an insight into what they're about, how they're they set up so I suppose give us a bit of an insight into them, how, how, are, how good are Primary? Uh, look, a, a tough nut to crack is the best way I can put it, and, and obviously with with top class players as well. And, and uh, interestingly, and um, we had lads here working for us that play for both Primorie and Cullyhanna. So you, I, I kind of get to hear both sides of the story. It was a bit quiet after the, the, the week Primorie beat us ourselves in here, but um, you, you, you're dealing with two teams that obviously have pedigree and also have. Uh, star quality when you, when you think of uh, obviously the, the, the county lads that Cullihanna have and then you think of the likes of Burns and, and McGeary with, with Roy you, you have some of the best players in the country playing at county level but they're I know from Roy are backboned by an incredible defensive system as well and they're probably a little bit different in that sense where you have Cullihanna most of their sort of players are, are most of their big players would be attacking sort of t type players whilst Primary have the 
the Burns McGarry who will roam everywhere and typically are probably more defensive minded than, than anything and that kind of they become the the fulcrum of of that sort of strong defensive unit that they have and I know the night we played them we we probably forced a few shots and we probably kicked a lot of wides and and sort of shorts and and maybe kicked ourselves out of it to some extent but a lot of that is down to the pressure that was on us because they they they, they have a very defensive solid unit and particularly in winter football the night we played them was was difficult conditions sort of driving wind and rain and um, it, it led to whenever there was a, a 50-50 ball or whenever there was a big hit to be made um, Primarily weren't found wanting and, and that's where they'll relish and in, in sort of having the opportunity to get probably stuck into a, a Cullihanna team that have been shooting the lights out all year in Armagh from what I gather Yeah well that's, that's the big thing about Cullihanna is the scores they're really putting up and I think the, the average maybe 219 in the championship and um, that was across six games so this could be a clash of styles. Cully Hanna want to, they want to shoot the lights out, but from Rye, they're going to try to keep the score down. Yeah, and look, we played from Rye twice in the past probably two months, obviously, in the championship final, and then we played them in a league game as well up in from Rye, and, and both both games, we we felt a lot of our strength was our attack as well. We have some fairly handy attackers playing first a minute that had county experience as well and Primary were very very good at shutting shutting us down I have to say that that was their strength so I've no doubt they will look at Cully Hanna and they'll say we, we've we we've done this before we, we've shut down big players obviously they've been fairly competitive at, at all levels in Tyrone the last couple of years and, and they probably only really get relegated because they have the county lads and in Tyrone you have the, you have to play obviously without the county lads for a large portion of your league which means they probably lost five or six games and, and it's it's difficult not to stay up in Tyrone without losing five or six games without your county lads so they'll they'll believe they're, they're, they're a senior side and they are now and they'll also believe they'll have met the caliber of forwards that Cully Hanna has has thrown at them because they'll have they'll have, they'll have met the Canavans they'll have they'll have met um, a lot of the sort of top thrown forwards in the last number of years and and they'll have dealt with them like uh, most of the from Roy games that they've played in the last couple of years they don't they don't tend to concede very much so the, the, they are stingy at the back and that night we played them up in Oma I know conditions led to probably a, a, a little part of it but we only got six scores and that's ultimately why we lost but we lost because one we weren't executing well on the night and two they put us under uh, on a, an intense pressure so yeah I think Cully Hanna probably won't have come across a team like it in terms of their ability to defend collectively and they are they make life very difficult because they play a transition very well and they've got the the players they need to play the transition as well they're very sort of powerful mobile players and around midfield one of them works for me here a lad Ronan Duffin uh, sort of young up and coming throne player so lad Laharn as well Ryan Laharn plays midfield for them he's six foot four and sort of Built like Jonah Lomo, and in terms of a rugby sort of player, very strong lad. So they, they, whenever you have four or five players that are incredibly tough physically and can play that transition game, and you've got a, a game plan that's built around that, and you've got a solid defensive unit, it it, it means they're they're they're, they're going to be tough to break down. I can tell you that. I suppose the, the way you describe them right there in terms of getting relegated because they were missing the county men, it's just the exact same situation in Armagh with Cully Hanna missing the county men and then missing a few boys with emigration and stuff. But there's their full hand back now from right, obviously the same. So both teams maybe coming into this year thinking they could give Ulster a right rattle and going by the bookies are the two favourites for Ulster. So one of them's going to be gone. Totally, and, and, and that's like we, we, we obviously, as a club, we, we come through the intermediate piece a few years ago and won the All Ireland, and it was an amazing run. Um, great, great pride and joy out of that, and probably one of the sort of pr proudest moments of my career, sort of standing in Croke Park with my club. And um, we, I know that year we got stronger, obviously, because we had myself and maybe Colum in the county at that stage, possibly Harry Lahorn as well. and the more obviously you get playing we are county players the more you get a sort of settled team um, because uh, historically it's probably difficult to try and sort of marry in the county players and the club players and, and now because of the split season the, these guys Cully Hanna and from Rye are getting their sort of six or seven games of a bit of a run and training together with the club and, and obviously are knitting together sort of patterns and, and, and ways of playing that, that, that 
is getting the best out of the county players playing with the club because that 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 had been a sort of Achilles heel of, of our club for quite some time. So you're dealing with two teams that are going to be much stronger than what historically they have been and possibly us down to the run they put and then the split season has allowed them to sort of knit their county players back into the club fold and you're seeing the, the results. And just on Primroy, obviously the big names, um, the McGeary's and, and Frank Burns and just gathering from our, our conversation offer, um, probably Hugh Pat McGeary's going to be on Aidan Nugent, I would imagine that's going to be the matchup. but in terms of Frank Burns and Kieran McGeary, um, they, they seem to play a more freer role. So, what what way? Macaulay Hannell obviously man mark them and try to tie them down. But I suppose tell us a bit about how Burns and McGeary play and how difficult it's going to be to tie them down. Yeah, look, it's one of these things, and and like we probably our, ourselves thought we'll tie these guys down, and those guys are used to getting mad marked every game. A bit probably a bit like Nugent or McQuillan. Are, are these guys with Cully Hanna. The, 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 these type of players playing in club games know they're going to get man-marked and, and, and the guys around them also know they're going to get man-marked. I suppose the difficulty you always have is trying to get someone physically to stay with the likes of Frank and Kieran for a prolonged period and, and also y you then break your pattern of play by sending someone after them all the time because they will roam everywhere and they, uh, they actually they have a lot of sort of football intelligence as well so if you send somebody after them surely you might find that that'll that they'll open the door for someone else to break through and, and hurt you defensively or something so they, they're, they're 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 two very free um, freestyle sort of players that you could find them anywhere from sort of two to fifteen on a sort of traditional uh, team team pattern and with that they're very game aware and the, the players around them are very game aware to know when to bring them into the game and, and sometimes that'll mean the ball will get run to them and it'll be handed to them and it gives them a kind of one-on-one -on -one or an opportunity to go at their man and break a line and they're obviously very good at that so it's not as easy um, trying to shut them down sometimes even as it would be maybe the likes of a Nugent might typically stay in an inside forward position and it's probably easier to take out because you you know roughly where he's going to operate in the pitch and, and you'll be able to get, the, they'll, they'll be getting numbers from where I will look at just getting numbers and smothering that. Frank and Kieran could be taking the ball out of their own full back line and <laughs> it, 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 you then decide how much you compromise those players to sort of man mark those guys. Um, but the rest of the Primary lads know that they're going to get shut down and they'll always adjust their, their sort of game plan accordingly. So it's definitely much easier said than done trying to shut them down. And on Primary, they're we're obviously talking about them as a good defensive unit and they're going to try to shut Cully Hanna down and even Burns and the two McGeary's are more defensive-minded players perhaps. But just looking at a few of their scores throughout the championship, I think the final was the only game they didn't get a goal in and a couple of games you know, scoring 2-12 on that. So... While they're defensively solid, obviously to win a championship you have to get the scores at the other end too. So I suppose how how are they up front? Uh, how how difficult is Cully Hanna going to find their forwards? See, uh, and why why they're difficult to shut down is they they don't like we played Clano in the semi final and and we we had a fair idea. Clano had two or three sort of county panelists and Connor McAlisky and uh, Danny McNulty and. Um, we, they, the, those guys were a bit like the Nugents and these guys who were um, possibly McQuillan to some extent whereby they kind of operated from midfield up and, and, and we were able to get sort of numbers around them get hands on them and, and, and somewhat make sure they were nullified from, from, from taking a control of the game um, Primroy ha have strengths all over the place uh, uh, as in they're, they're, they're a little bit, if you've watched Derry this year playing at county level, some of their greatest strengths were coming from maybe McCluskey at cornerback or Daugherty at wingback or Rogers at midfield. So they've actually defenders and defensively minded players that are more more threatening than some of the, even their sort of out and out forwards. And that's where the lad Campbell at wing forward, he'll drop back and he's he very, very pacey. He'll pick up a lot of ball. He got a really good goal in their semi final against Derry Lahan. He's a big threat. Lad Ronan Duffin there, he hits freeze. He can hit from play as well. I think he's got man and match in a couple of their games to date. He's a serious player. Lahan always chipping for two or three points. And then the, the, the guys coming from the defence, which includes your McGeary's and Burns's and Brendan Burns, who's, who's Frank's brother. So they have a lot of a lot of players that can hurt you from deep, and that's what makes them difficult to stop because they're very good at playing that sort of transition type game. 
and it, it just means you can't set up to stop one or two of them. There, there could be a wave of six of them that, it, that could equally chip in on the scoreboard, and they did that um, against themselves, and I watched them against Derry Lahan, and they did the same. So they, they have developed a bit of a pattern of scoring 12, 13, 14 scores a game, which usually includes goals, and it's not coming from one or two candidates. It's coming from five or six, which can be hard to play against. And who do you see coming out on top, Sean? Because obviously, as we mentioned, the two teams are favourites for Ulster, so whoever we see we could possibly see those two champions coming out of Oma on Saturday night. So who do you see coming out on top? Uh, look, I know it's always easy for me to sort of say the throne team, and I know, look, Cully Hanna, I have plenty of connections with Cully Hanna, and there's a couple of lads work for me that are there as well, and, and I know the Mackins and the, those guys as well, and the Keevers. And, um, McGutt does say, from Roy, McGutt says that Cully Hanna won't have come across a team that can shut you down as, as much as from Roy can do. And I know sometimes it can be like a false dawn where you can think, yeah, you know what, we we know how to stop a blanket defence, but um, Pomeroy executed blanket defence much stronger than, than most teams that I've come across, and definitely they were the strongest defensive team in, in Division 2 in Tyrone this year, and that included ourselves, Clano, uh, Derry Lahan, some, some, like, uh, there's probably four or five teams that would consider themselves senior teams in intermediate this year in Tyrone, so it was a very competitive intermediate, and they definitely were the strongest defensively, so it's, it's going to be an intriguing battle, but, um, yeah, look, uh, my gut probably says this time of year, if there is a bit of wind and rain, it'll suit Pomeroy, and it could make life very difficult for, for, for Cully Hanna to get a foothold into the game and play that sort of forward type football that they probably want to play. Had the game maybe been played in June or July, I might be saying Cully Hanna, but just for the, for the time of the year that we're playing and the conditions that are likely to be played in, I think Pomeroy might edge it. And do you fancy a throwing double with Trellick as well, getting over cross, or how do you see it pulling out? It's a tricky one. Like I'd, I'd say on paper, cross are probably the stronger looking... Like sort of kind of come from nowhere if you had to say to someone said said to me two months ago that Terlick would come out of Tyrone you wouldn't have believed it you know Aidan Dark nearly nipped them I watched that game they played up in Cark Moor and Aidan Dark only for Niall Morgan's kind of slipping when he's kicking it and again like Dark went intermediate last year in Tyrone so Tyrone has that sort of uh, enigma that 10 or 12 teams can always win in senior and, and Terlick had to ride their luck through the Tyrone Championship now there'll still be a, a, a very strong force to, to be reckoned with but you, you would imagine on paper with the sort of quality that, that Cross have I would imagine Cross would see themselves as, as favoured to come through that one but Turlick's been written off and, and, and done more so than in the final they were, they were obviously against a very favoured Ergel team and, and they come through that and, and they were they were five, six points a better team that day so you write them off at your peril but on paper it looks like Cross have a stronger one in that size So on to the second game then um, with Cross Mullane and Trillick. Another one to really look forward to here and another crack at Ulster, Paul, which I know Cross was very disappointed last year out here against Bally Bay. Um, a black yard just before half time sort of disrupted their momentum because they'd, they'd got a good rain, got a good goal and they were leading before that. So I know for the past 12 months this has really been hitting hard and it's a, it's a chance to redeem their, themselves come Saturday night now. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. I think uh, the Bay game last year is something that doesn't rest easy with us, you know. <clears throat> I know the, probably the game last year, the first we got a black card, as you mentioned, and uh, they sort of went on a bit of a scoring spree and scored about 1-7 no play, which sort of won the game with them in the first time in the second half, and then we suddenly really couldn't claw them back. But uh, as you say, it's something that doesn't rest easy with the players. Uh, you know, we, we thought we were... We were in a better place than that, and we we were going to make a better account of ourselves. But it wasn't to be. So it's been twelve months in the making to get back to where we are now. Uh, new management stepped in with with Andy Cunningham and Andy Callan and Steve Morgan there, and and Jim McConville. You know they've 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 soldiered on, and as you say, all year been out without the county players, and you know done done reasonably well in the league. Got got everybody got football. You know we tested the panel the whole way through, and all the young guys got. Got plenty of minutes, and uh, he's he's rotated the panel fairly well. So then, you know, it's about getting the boys in, in the proper shape to come back when the county boys come back in. That that everybody's ready to go and ready to go for the championship. So, uh, you know, we, Dan he's done a good job so far. He's uh, probably changed 
the sort of state of play to a certain extent. But, uh, you know, as Paulie says, we've come under a bit of pressure, but we've passed every test in, fr in front of us. A few hairy moments during the season, all right. Uh, probably the Harps game was was uh, was the toughest test where we were stuck in, uh, stuck to the pin of our collar and it went to extra time. But uh, the boys the boys done well, came through it, and we find ourselves now where we want to be. And I think a big thing about that, Paul, is maybe their bench as well, across his bench. You know, you've mentioned about everybody getting football during the league. And then we've seen here in the county final, Ron Fitzpatrick coming on and getting a goal and a point after being introduced to Yvonne O'Neill now, getting his first crack at senior football. And he, he was mad looking to score against Clans. He just couldn't get the, in the right position. But seeing plenty of balls, won a, I think he won a free as well, a scoreable free. So having that bench and just having that firepower, again, we were talking about Cully Hanna, but having that uh, firepower off the bench is a big thing for Cross. Yeah, we have seemed to have plenty of firepower starting as well like you know we, we're, we're blessed with forwards at the moment and then you bring in the lad Ronan Fitzpatrick and you know Daniel uh, Daniel Comiskey as well and Harry Comiskey and you know you've mentioned uh, Aaron O'Neill coming into the fold as well one of the uh, other O'Neill brothers so we're blessed we're blessed in that department in a minute so they're coming on they're mad for football you know you have to give it to them they've come into the panel them boys the young fellas and uh you know, when they come on, they're making an impact. They're making a difference, and that's what you want from your sort of fringe players or players who are just coming on as substitutes. But they're they're also very young, and you have to maybe you know bide their time as well. Ronan probably a bit more experience, obviously, than Aaron. But uh, you know they'll come, and they're getting they're getting uh, experience every day to go out and more minutes under their belt, and they've great attitude, and they're just mad for football, and they want to get in, and they want to be on the end of the. Uh, moves and, and try and get as many scores as possible because they're mad hungry for football and it's great to see. And scores um, Paul Day you just spoke about Cully Hanna's firepower across the ground, the two O'Neills, Kim McCampbell jump right off the page but you have the likes of Jamie Clark now back after a couple of years um, Callum Comiskey can come up and kick a point Aaron Kiernan, Stephen Morrison midfield scored a couple, Paul Hughes in the final as well so Cross the seem to just have scoring power coming from everywhere. If you can tie down Key and Jamie Clark will step up. If you can tie them two down, one of them needs to step up. So it's very hard to get it right against Cross. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you even look at the county final, you probably would have said that, you know, Oshin and Rain were probably you know nearly quieter in the county final than they had been in previous rounds. And you'd be sort of if you were coming from a Clanagale sort of angle, you'd be thinking right. If we can keep these two boys quiet, that'll go a long way to helping us, you know, get a good result in this game. They kept them relatively quiet. I know Rain sort of dropped back a wee bit, maybe more defensive duties than, than normal. But to just have an array of forwards and not even forwards, boys coming from defensive roles, you know, attacking over overlapping. I think Rico even kicked the point in him from full back. Like so they've got scores from all over the field, very hard to defend against. And you might keep one or two or maybe three of their scoring targets maybe quiet on any given day. But then whenever you've got two or three other boys stepping up, it's very, very hard to defend against. But there's, there's going to be two important players missing here, Paul as well, with James Morgan on the cross side. Obviously, hasn't played um, at all for cross this year. And with Molly Donnelly from Trellick as well, who is hugely influential for Tyrone on Trellick down through the years. So both of them players possibly could have been marking each other had they been available. So two big misses for both teams. Yeah, two hugely influ influential players. Yeah, Manny Donnelly, you know, a couple of all-stars on his belt. James Morgan, hugely experienced player, been on the last all Ireland winning team and that there. And, you know, you feel very disappointed for them players, you know. They've been soldiering on and at this end of their career, they'd love to be playing at this stage with their club. You know, Manny Donnelly, fantastic footballer. And as you say, James as well. But it would have been uh, worth entrance for you alone uh, them two to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against each other. But uh, unfortunately not to be. But, uh, you know, James has been unfortunate with injuries this last wee while. He's probably had surgery on his foot on his hand and stuff. And he's 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 back on his feet now. I think it, it shouldn't be too long until he's he's back, uh, probably on the field. But it's just, uh, it's not his season at this stage. But, uh, you know, it is it's very disappointing for them guys. But, like like they're saying, Manny Donny has probably been out of every training session there, urging his boys on. James is down there in the change room as often as he can be as well. You know, encouraging the boys and you know probably just wishing he could be there just to get a wee taste of the atmosphere and that there, and it is disappointing for them. But uh, we'll have to soldier on without them. 
and Paddy, um, we spoke about Anthony Cunningham and his job with Cross this year. Obviously, the Trillick boss, Jody Gormley, um, he was a Cully Hanna manager 10 years ago and come up against Cross that year as well in the county final. So, I suppose, give us a, an insight into Jody Gormley, what's what's his managerial style? Well, Jody, I suppose his record speak for itself. Um, Jody, whenever he first in his first year in the Abbey, he you know, went in his first year and won a McCrory Cup and a Hogan Cup in his first year in there, like that just in itself tells you what he's about uh, and haven't done it since. Um, then he was with us then, as I said, then in 2013, um, took us to our first ever senior county final. Um, as we were talking earlier, um, we probably got across by McNabb in the semi-final and nearly fell into the final, sort of been known to ourselves. Uh, we were getting well beat at half time in the semi-final. Uh, got to the final, uh, came up against Cross, and I think maybe this the occasion maybe got to us a wee bit. Uh, we didn't perform, and Cross sort of done what they're usual. You know, once they sort of sniffed the smell of blood at all, they just pushed on and ended up beating us by eight uh, in the end. But Jody's a good manager. You know, he'll have them boys well drilled. He'll find some sort of angle. You know, in the final against uh, Aragal Cairn, he felt his team was disrespected, that everybody was talking about Aragal and talking about Aragal for Ulster. Uh, and then he would have used that as motivation for his players. Like there was nobody mentioned Trillick. Trillick were coming in sort of under the radar a wee bit, uh, and he felt his team was disrespected. It's his home club. Whenever you're involved with your home club, you know you've that wee bit more of impetus to do well. Um, he'll find some sort of angle uh, to get them boys going again, and they shouldn't need any angle. You know, first round of Ulster against the Cross Glen team with all their pedigree and history. You know, they shouldn't need any motivation. But if there is an extra that needs to be found, Jody will find it. I'm not, I'm not sure if it makes any difference, Paul, but we spoke about tr- our um, cross playing Bally Bay last year and waiting 12 months to want to get back at this. Trillick maybe come out of nowhere to win the the Tyrone Championship, so maybe I'm not sure. Will they be taking it as bonus territory or are they saying this is a shot till we've completed one box? Let's give this our best go as well and maybe upset the odds. Yeah, listen, if you're in, in Trillick's shoes, you're you're laughing. You know, as as Paddy said, you're probably very disrespectful to uh, Trillick going into the final. Everybody was talking about Eric Kieran and, and how far people thought they could go. But, uh, you know, Trillick, Trillick is a well-seasoned team. They've been in around semi-finals and finals and thrones the last five or six years. You know, they've, they've been there or thereabouts every year. So, you know, I'd say they were rubbing their hands, everybody talking about Eric Kieran. And and Jody Jody Gormley laughing, he could stuff up on the wall, this that and the other, and he, the boy boys motivated up to the high hilt. But you have to hand it to them; they went toe to toe with Erigel. You know, they done a great job on them. Uh, curtailed the Canavans. You know, Richie Donnelly had a had a fantastic game. Young Donnelly at the back had a great job on Young Canavan, I think. And you know, they really done the homework well. So tactically, you can understand that they're very astute with with, with Jody here. His matchups all all correct and done well and their appetite for the game obviously was second to none because you know the, the game was a draw after full time went to extra time and the staying power and the hunger for the game right to the final whistle you know they, they deserve their victory so they'll they'll they had like everyone else went and celebrated the win and then they knuckle down probably on the Tuesday night and go listen this isn't the end of the road for us we want to go a wee bit further you know if everybody was tipping Eric here and been us why can't we be in their shoes so uh you know, all the all the pieces that are in uh, their court. They're probably coming in. Cross is probably slight favourites. I don't know what the crack is, but uh, Trillick will be coming in. They'll be happy enough to come in as dark horse, so to speak, and 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 go toe to toe again with a, with another really good team. They put one away. Why can't they do it again? You know. And I suppose Trillick. When we're speaking about Trillick, we spoke about Matty Donnelly being out. Um, and I suppose before we go on to the matchups, just potty a few of their big names: Rory Brennan, Richie Donnelly, Lee Brennan. They do have that county experience, and I suppose in Lee Brennan, they have somebody that's gonna, you know, has the ability to shoot the lights out. Brennan and, and Donnelly helping out around the middle of the field. So there's there's a lot of talent in that Trillick team too. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's no coincidence that the teams that are making it to the latter stages of these competitions are the teams that do have plenty of score of o- scoring options. You know, if you play in a team where you know you're solely reliant on one or two players, well then if you shut them down, you know they're easily marked, and you know you don't have maybe three or four other scoring options. You know that's the way it's going these days. You know we need to have scores coming from all over the field. Uh, but as you mentioned, there's going to be a couple of good matchups there. I probably would presume that. Lee Brennan, he's going to probably sit in deep and probably cross his main mar marker to me so far in the championship. Probably would have been Chris Crowley. You know, Chris has been very good, very sticky marker. 
um, like he was given a task in the county final against Cal Moneil and he passed that test with flying colours um, he definitely got the better of that tussle and probably against Lee it probably would suit the likes of Chris where you know the probably similar stature similar speed uh, and I think he probably will get that job and it'll be an interesting tussle come Saturday night I think that, that's one of the big matchups for Cross um, Paul is going to be possibly Crowley on, on Lee Brown and further out the field um, just guessing obviously but I think we're going to see Richie Donnelly maybe taking on Oshin O'Neill with Rory Brannan um, going to, to Rian around the middle and possibly following and following him back if needs be if Ryan goes into the full forward line but I suppose are, are, do you feel are they the matchups that that we're looking forward to here? Yeah I'd say you're probably not far off the mark there listen Oshin will need to be looked after and so will Richie Donnelly Richie Donnelly's been playing out of his skin lately and he's been very very good I think he had a hell of a game in the final and you know he's in he's in great he's in great neck and he's he can he's a great engine he'll be up and down the field so and Oshin you know he's he's had a great year too he's only coming back from from a couple of years of, of you know desperate injury so he's he's getting better all the time as he goes out so it'll be it'll be a great uh, it'll be a great tussle between the two of them if 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 the two managers pit them up against each other and then with young uh, Brennan going on to Rian as well I think you know Rian. Just judging by the games he's played so far, he, he's floating between midfield forwards and and uh, and defence. Some sometimes in the full back lane, clearing up stuff as well. So he's really taken on that role of you know sort of a must do, go to wherever I have to be, and he's done it well. So he, whether you man mark that or not is or just wait for him to come up the field and mark him. That's another thing. They might just keep him keep the marker. At, at midfield and wait for Ian to come on to, to in an attack so it's hard to know what way maybe Jody Gormley will, will, will go after that but uh, you know you have a lot of matchups there which will be very very interesting and it'll be it'll be keen to watch who, who goes toe to toe with each other So we spoke to Pascal Canavan during the week obviously an Earl Kieran man so knows a lot about Trillick as well and knows um, a good bit about Cross having managed the Armagh Harps this year so we'll hear what Pascal has to say on the big game this weekend so Pascal, with two massive games coming up this weekend in Oma, Armagh and Tyrone double headers, that's that's an attractive one. Uh, it's a bit earlier than we thought that would be the case, right? Uh, uh, but ah, uh, brilliant! And uh, everybody looks forward to the club at this stage of the year. And uh, there's not much else on in relation to clubs games elsewhere. So uh, yeah, everybody's looking forward to uh, Oma now next next weekend. And I suppose the the Cully Hannan from my one. It's going to be a big one, obviously, too, but the, the Trillick and Cross, I think most people thought it was going to be Cross and Urgell, and that, um, obviously, from your own playing days, there's a bit of history there, but Trillick and Cross probably don't know a whole pile about each other. would never have uh, crossed, crossed paths or nothing, so it's it's going to be a new one for both teams. Yeah, definitely, and it's, you see all the same names coming through from other counties. You have the Cross, Kilcoo, and uh, obviously Derry Gonnelly, Scotchtown, all them similar names that have great experience. Uh Unfortunately, in the throne it's very, very difficult to do it back to back and get a get a, a second crack at it. Uh, so it leaves it a very new or novel fixture, surely. Um, so you have the experience of a cross uh, versus just the maybe the hunger and appetite of Trillick. So uh, it's a hard one to gauge simply because uh, they haven't crossed paths. But uh, again, it'll not uh, it'll not hold Trillick back, and I'm sure Cross is uh, looking forward to just recovering from their their maybe disappointment of the performance they had last year. I think that, that's been a big thing for them, having spoke to a few of the players and just interviews and all after the county final, like just getting that one back uh, after Bally Bay, that's a huge motivating factor for, for Cross. Definitely, all right, yeah, it's bound to be, uh, because it was, you know, I remember watching the game last year and, uh, yeah, the fact, uh, just not that they were bit, but how they were bit and they were well bit, uh, probably Bally Bay were very underrated going into that game, they were far more experienced and better team than a lot of people give them credit for, but, um no, Cross were caught in, in Ulster, and it's not too often the case that they had, that had a very bad performance or poor performance in relation to their own standards. So oh, they'll be keen uh, keen to get back now next next weekend uh, down in Oma. So uh, it leaves it very intriguing. I suppose, Pascal, tell us a wee bit about Trillick because we know the Brennans and um, some of their big names, Richie Donnelly too, obviously. Who who else have they? Have they, they are obviously a, a great team, so who else should we be looking out for? Uh, well, there's a right few of them have played at um, Throne at some level at underage and that, and maybe maybe they're not household names, but uh, they're certainly well established and well known uh, within Throne. And 
you know, it's been it's probably been Tillich's story all year, and that they've been coming through games, uh, not really been fancied, knowing that they're going to put up a performance, but not really been fancied, and uh, it's, it's probably the same case on Saturday as well. Uh, but they've had a lot of uh, all their key performers have played well, and you're, you're after naming them there. Uh, Richie Donnelly in the county final showed uh, why he's such a leader, uh, and he came good in the then big moments. Uh, Rory Brennan had a brilliant game. Lee, obviously, always with freeze, uh, with a, a steady as always. But yeah, obviously, you have the likes of um, the O'Downs, two O'Down lads, who are two good players. Um, I think they got a lot of their football from their mother's side, uh, not from the dad's side. And then um, you have a young lad, a young fella, McKay, that's coming through there, who has been uh, just working his way into the team there his last couple of years, and now he's got himself in, he's got established. And uh, so you have a lot of you have a lot of players. Uh, like uh, young Bailey as well, who uh, has played for the under, thrown under twenties, and uh, not household names, but very good players, and uh, they know they know their game so well, and they know how to play around each other's game, and I suppose they're they're a better team than what a lot of people give them credit for. Uh, so uh, yeah, they'll be looking forward now. Great excitement to uh, Saturday. And I suppose with Matty Donnelly being out, it makes their winning throne much more impressive because he everybody knows how good of a player Matty Donnelly is. But coming into Ulster now, like his, he's going to be a huge miss not being available. Definitely. Uh, and I suppose the last day Richie sco- stepped up and hit them big scores that sometimes you'd associate Matty with. Just not good scores, uh, but good scores at that time of the game. And sometimes... Sometimes there's maybe there's maybe only a few players that'll, that'll take that on. Matty's definitely one of them, but uh, Richie didn't shy away from the opportunity uh, in the county final. So, uh, but yeah, absolutely, yeah. key players. Uh, you know, obviously Cross have some key men missing as well. But uh, Matty, Matty's a huge huge loss. He's very hard to replace. Uh, but what's galvanised Tillich is the fact that every time they've met a setback this year, it has. Galvanize them, but has throw them on, and uh, they are they're a, they, you know they're a better collective team maybe than the, the some of their parts if you know what I mean, and the, they're uh, they do they do work well around and play a certain style of football, and uh, it it suits them well. They're hard to break down, um, and um, yeah, but uh, Matty still still a huge loss. Yeah. And having come up against Cross Millen this year, Pascal, how difficult a, a job is it trying to, to pin down their best men and try to work their work them out and obviously try to try to beat them? It's so we're talking off air there, like there's loads of teams have got near to cross, but it's it's beating them's the challenge. There's a lot of hard luck stories they uh, playing against Cross, but uh yeah, you, you know they're they're lucky in that they, they probably have a lot of lot of leaders uh, right throughout right throughout their team, you know. Um Obviously, Aaron Kiernan has stepped up to the plate and is still doing that. You know, he's still such an important player for them, and how he sets up and how he keeps them organised, and they look towards him. So he, when he's on the field, he's always a leader, and he and he still very much is. Um, Callum Comiskey, centre half back, uh, obviously is a leader, uh, and he's a key key player in our mob, but he's also a very important player for um, uh, Cross. Uh, middle of the field, you have, um, you know. You have a number of players there. I know uh, Stephen Stephen Morris. I think he's very he's very highly rated down there, and uh, so you just seem to have leaders on on each lane lane of the pitch. Um, and when you go into the forward lane, you have three or four men which you have to try and keep very quiet. And uh, when you have a, you know, you have a, every team has their markers uh, and they, you're allocated maybe scoring forwards. But cross cross have the ability to, to um, um, get key men in the right positions and it's not always the same player that does damage so if you manage to keep Jamie quiet obviously you'll have Rain um, stepping up and if you manage to keep Rain and, and, and Jamie quiet well obviously Cian McConville you know handles so much ball and such a dangerous player uh, and then obviously in the county final you had Paul Hughes stepping forward to kick a couple of points Rico coming forward uh, from full back line and knocking one over so you have that quality on, on each lane uh, but on any given day, you just don't know where who's going to step up. And I suppose cross the the thing with the harps, Pascal was the goals that you got that day, and that has been a, a big talk on point about the cross defence. And is the goals there? Is the goals that you can get out of them? They've changed their keeper now, and Murray's back in net. So was that something that you were targeting, Pascal? Was balls into the square or? Yeah, well, I suppose it, w- it was a factor in the previous championship games that. that Cross have been involved in, so we were certainly aware of that. Uh, yeah, that they seem to be suspect, 
with a high ball going in there, and uh, I suppose it has been the case, and even the county final, with the change of keeper and maybe they've made a change of personnel in the full back line, uh, they still managed to concede a goal in there. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure that's something they're very aware of. It's something that they'll be trying to um, eradicate out of their game. But um, they do seem to be a bit more settled now that this uh, they've got another keeper in who's, who's, who's playing well, and he obviously missed a lot of their championship games earlier on in the year. But, um, yeah, you know, I can't see Trollick just resorting to high balls going in. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it has been a factor. It was a factor with Cross, but I think they're working hard to address that. All right. I think the, the thing about Cross is you probably need to score 18, 19, 20 points to beat them because they're, they're scoring tallies. They're always putting up, you know, I think they're 216 in, in the final. And I think they've got maybe 20, 21 points against yourselves. So to beat them, uh, uh, goals would help, but you do need to get, you know, 18, 20 points, don't you? Well, you do, and just just how they play. The, uh, obviously, they are maybe trying to play a wee bit more defensive, but it's in their DNA just to play that traditional type of game, and that's that's how they go about it. And the, ki the kicking is on; they they'll kick the ball and they'll move it fast, they'll move it sharp. So they do create a lot of chances uh, for themselves, uh, simply with the speed how they transition the ball from one side of the field to another. So yeah, to adapt to that or to try and beat cross, yeah. I'd say 20, 20 points is probably the target in relation to, to beating them. Uh, I'm sure Trillick will be setting up a wee bit more defensively. They'll certainly be trying to hold them to a whole lot, um, you know, um, to a, a smaller a smaller amount than that. But uh, it's that's that's easier said than done, you know. And who who do you think is going to win this one, Pascal? Because um, this is the hard side of draw. I think the winner plays either Kilku or Scotstown. So this is uh, this is a really big game for both Cross and Trillick. And you, as I said, you know more about Trillick than I do. So who do you see coming out on top here? Well, I think Trillick's, Trillick's played under uh, you know the underdog card very well this year. Um, and uh, de definitely, they're definitely underdogs going in here on uh, Saturday night again. Um, you know, Cross have the pedigree, Cross have the experience of playing at this level, and it's one thing that a lot of throwing teams don't have. So um, when you have the quality of players, uh, you know, both teams have there's quality on both sides, obviously, but um, experience stands for a lot at the stage, and uh, that's definitely uh, that's where Cross maybe have it over over Trillick. So, um, yeah, they're a fairly free-scoring team. Uh, Trillick's been very good defensively uh, throughout, um, you know, in, in competitions, just not this year, but in previous years. Uh, Trillick have been, uh, you know, how to s set up defensively, and uh, they'll be confident in, uh, that they'll be able to do a job on Saturday night as well. Uh, but I think that experience and just the fact that, uh, as you mentioned earlier, that Bally Bay game from last year is something that's probably burning in the back of... Uh, Cross Midlands Mains that they'll be keen to put that right on Saturday night. So just before we finish up then, um, we get a few predictions off you as Pascal and Sean for predictions, so I'll have to throw them across to you. Um, Paddy, I assume you're, you're going to go for an Armagh double here? I'm hopeful of an Armagh double, to be honest. Um, I just think with the scoring power, I know we've mentioned it several times at this stage, like, but uh, to get through a county championship by an average score of winning by 14 points just shows the scoring power we have. I know Palmer A, you know, they were winning their matches maybe by an average of five points throughout their championship and there's maybe four items as opposed to our six. Uh, I just think we've maybe got too much scoring power for them. I don't want to give them any motivation here if anyone sees this, but I think we've got too much scoring power for them. Uh, and we've got too many scores from different angles, whereas I think if we got our matchups right and we sort of kept Frank Burns and uh, Kieran McGeary and maybe Jude Campbell, if we can keep tabs on them and keep them boys quiet, I think just the way to play defensively, uh, I just don't think they're going to score enough to get themselves over the line. Hopefully we can pip it by a pint or two uh, for the Colliana game. And regards to cross, uh, again, it's going to be a very tight game. Again, as we mentioned before, there is that wee bit of the unknown um, between Cross and Trillick they maybe haven't played each other before but I'm sure they both know loads about each other they would have done an awful lot of research there in the last couple of weeks uh, about each other and it's an intriguing match up I think it's going to be a close game can go to the wire but with Fancy Cross in that one too And Paul how do you see both games going on Saturday night? Yeah I think Paul he's covered most of it there uh, listen it'd be great to have an AMA double going into a Saturday night <clears throat> I think I think he's he's cracking what he says. I think Cullihanna really need to push on here. 
you know, they have the players, they have the panel now to really make a go with this tournament. And the first step is here Saturday night in uh, in Oma. And I really hope that the boys, you know, play to their potential again. As Paulie says, they've passed every test of flying colours that they've come across so far. There'll be times it'll come on Saturday nights where it'll get really, really tough. And uh, they'll have to, you know, really throw the shoulder to the wheel and, and go at the game. But uh, with their scoring power and, and their team play that have been showing out throughout the AMA Championship, I think we can, I think Cully Hanna will probably chip in with a four or five point victory. Uh, hopefully our, ourselves, you know, I'm expecting a real cagey match, to be honest. You know, across the way they've been going this last few matches, they've been fairly tight in the first half and keeping things tight and defensive enough. And I think they don't, I'd say it's like it'll probably be the same. Could be cage, you know, first half, and they're not letting too much away. And I think maybe you're going to have probably wait till 40, 45, 50 minutes to see maybe someone break loose or some sort of play to lads getting tired and stuff. And a few holes maybe appear in the fences, and then they'll go probably toe to toe, and the, the game will it'll, it'll open up a wee bit. But uh, I do expect a, a tough attritional affair probably Saturday night. On, a real battle, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, Cross can share it by a pint or two. Well, I'll go for an Armagh double too. You just say for what it's worth. Um, just before we go, um, I just want to send out our sympathies to um, to the Grimley family and the Madden Club. Obviously, we lost a dear friend in Potty Grimley this week. Um, not only Armagh TV, but the sideline I too. He was a brilliant help to me the last couple of years with notes and going to different games for me and helping with team of the week and different debates with them so um lost a real a real true gale this week and um, just want to send our sympathies to to the whole modern club and the grimley family and um, before we wrap up um, thanks to everybody for helping out this evening thanks to paul and potty for being here thanks to sean and pascal for speaking to us during the week and thanks to sean haggerty on camera here as well so we'll be covering the game with previews match reports and hopefully a few interviews um, following the results on, on Saturday night so thanks everybody for tuning in and big thanks to all our sponsors for helping out with this event as well